Hey guys, I am back and today I'll be showing you how easy it is to make homemade a kimchi. So you will need a napa cabbage, a carrots, garlic, this is garlic, this is ginger, and this is green onions, onions, salt, Korean daikin. This is very important. You guys have to find a Korean daikin. And then a pear, or I like to use the apple pear. They have a distinct taste that I prefer. And then you will need a chili pepper powder that is on the coarse kind. And some fish sauce. And if you don't like a fish sauce, salt will do. But there is a little bit change on the taste. And then you will need a, ta a tablespoon measurement and this one here what is this grater and these are the items we will need okay and so this is a basically what you will need for our recipe of today i want to show you guys a little trick before i continue so before we started i want to show you guys a little trick uh, so I have found out that the green onions in the store have risen the price. So now what I do is, once I finish them, I just planted them like this. And look how much I have right now. And those onions that sprouted, I just plant them just like that one here. And are you tired of finding your ginger drying out? So what I do is, as soon as I cut a part of it, I'll just put it on a pot right here and they will stay very fresh up for a very long time and just dig it once you are done or once you need it and then and that korean daikin see that i put the bottom in there and they are growing real good and if you don't even have a soil or a lot of soil you just need a lot look at this onion right here i just put it right on the top it's doing really good i've been harvesting those green onions on the top without issues pretty simple right so if you guys have a space or if you don't just get a cup put a water on it and then just plant it over there and then just change water every day or every other day for as long as it doesn't get stinky it gets stinky really quick so you gotta have to mind how you change the water so that is a little trick for today that's gonna help you save a lot of money over time. Okay, now let's go continue our kimchi. I have taken a six pieces of these. So this is gonna be equivalent of two cups. So if you guys have a bigger Napa cabbage in the store, just eyeball it up for two cups. And that is exactly what this recipe is called for. I wanna make a point that if you buy a Napa cabbage, pick the one that is light colored like this. It is it's not so green, it's more of a light yellow color, just like this one here, because the green one is a little bitter for my taste. Even if it fermented, somehow the taste is not what I like. I kind of like it like sweet or something. Like I'm not sure how to explain it, but this is the best kind I usually make if I am making kimchi. So this is what we need now. So you're gonna have to wash and dry all these you can make your kimchi big like this but i like mine to be chopped already so i'll show you guys that once i'm done I'm prepping everything but this is basically what we need right now so i will continue once all the prepping is done after you wash and dry it i cut them in small pieces like a bite size i put the first part the hard part in the bottom just like this and then the other parts are right here. So the first one, you put like one tablespoon of salt. And you wanna sprinkle it with salt. Probably half a teaspoon since we are just doing a small batch. So it's not gonna be too salty. Okay, so, so that is the first thing you're gonna have to do. And then now that you have fully covered it, put the leafy part on the top and then add one tablespoon or half a tablespoon of salt depends on if you already see it covered then stop you don't want it to be too salty but if you want to do the process really quick then you can add a more salt so it kind of will uh, very quick so there we go add the other half of it just make sure you rinse it really good after an hour or 
this part here can bend without cracking. So what I'm saying is, you know this part here, this hard part, you know it's ready when it doesn't crack like that. When it bends like it's like this, like without a cracking, then you know it's time for you to rinse your Napa cabbage. So right now, we just started here. We're gonna leave it at least 30 minutes and then we'll go check it. I don't wanna make it over, over with salt because then it's gonna be too salty. I want it to be the perfect crunch. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we'll come back after that. All right, now that we are done with the Napa cabbage, I have a julienne a carrot. And so a while ago, this is how big it is. So you basically just need about two tablespoons. So not a lot, but it depends on how much you wanted it. So for me, I just need a little bit. And then for the green onions, it's one fourth a cup and half a cup of the daikin. You can make it half or one fourth, less or more, depends on what you wanted. But I kind of like my daikin radish kimchi. You can buy them separate, but I like mine together with my Napa cabbage, so I put extra. So this is the apple, apple pear. So we need that, we kind of remove the seed and just these. And now we're gonna go start grating them. You can use a food processor or a blender, but if you are like me and don't have those, these will do. Okay, your first things are first, you wanna go use about two tablespoons of grated onion. So I like to use the white or the yellow onion so it's not so strong, a little bit sweet on the side. Side note, like, so we started on the soft kind so it doesn't get it messy for the grater. So there we go, but two tablespoons is all we need. Right now I am just eye boiling, eye, eye boiling, eye boiling, 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 what the heck, I can't even say it. So there we go, two tablespoons is what we need. No, not two tablespoons, one tablespoon, we're doing, we're doing a small batch, I'm thinking, my outer batch. Okay, one tablespoon of grated onion. So now it's time uh, for the apple, apple pear. So you guys can use any pear, but this is better for me because it's on the sweeter note and I like it that way. Okay, and so you need a tablespoon, up to two tablespoons if you want it sweeter, then you can make it a two tablespoon. But uh, for the sake of you being first time, let's go with one tablespoon, okay? So one tablespoon is what we need uh, for these. There we go, and these you can just put it down there. They'll be okay. Okay, so there you go, get the idea. And now we're gonna add uh, more garlic. So the garlic, you have to add one a tablespoon as well. So it's very easy to remember, one, 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 right? So there we go. And if you want more garlic, then you can do whatever you want. But for the sake of doing it for the first time, just follow my lead because then you don't mess with the taste. Okay, so this is a very easy not time consuming i don't think especially if you get the hang of making them it's very quick and so there we go almost there and if you cannot grate them anymore just dump them there nothing is wasted i was just watching a show where they showed a small tub of kimchi is seven dollars oh my god that's gonna be more if you have to pay food tax okay and so there we go and now the last one we're gonna be the ginger i like the ginger last because it kind of removed the parts in the bottom because for some reason it's a lot easier for me okay but you do what you want to do just uh, follow the exact recipe i'm showing you guys right now okay this one you can remove this part here or you can let it be up to you personal preference but mine i like to add them because i eat them anyway so now just remove it okay there we go so we grated everything we need to grate and we'll show you the next step next
next step, we will add our chili pepper. Okay, so this is the one available in the store right now, but you guys can find the one, I think it's J1. I usually buy the J1. It's made in Korea, and they have a better taste for me. But so far, I couldn't find them, so we're sticking to the one available. So we'll add a two tablespoon, just like these. You can add a more if you want it to be more colorful or spicier. So there we go, add that. And if you guys buy a bigger bag like I do, after you use it, just freeze it, put it on the freezer. Their life stays longer that way. And the taste seems to be preserved. Okay, next step, we're gonna add our fish sauce. So if you guys haven't used a fish sauce and looking for a good brand, okay, I'm not sponsored by these, but this is the best fish sauce I have found for years. So, and they are very expensive right now. So I found an alternative, not so great, a little bit milder. They are available in Costco and two, two bottles are for like $5. So instead of paying 10 bucks for these, I bought $5 for two, right? And now time for us to add a two tablespoon of fish sauce. If you guys don't want a fish sauce, you can use whatever, bonito flakes or the nori or seaweed packet. Just make sure you kind of taste it, adjust the taste based on the saltiness you wanted. I'm not a salty person, so I'm kind of making it lighter on the salt okay you can this is the base for me two tablespoon and if it's not too salty then i'll add more so mix it afterwards and then kind of taste it if it's a salty or not and if it's not salty yet then add more but for now we're adding just two tablespoon to make it the right consistency and taste wise Okay, so we mix it until they are completely put together. So that is the reason why it's best to use a food processor because you know, you evenly mix everything. So that's that. And then while we're waiting for an apple cabbage, we'll set this aside, I'll cover it and set it aside. I like the fact that I am putting it all together so the flavor is mixed really good. You can do this later or you can do it after you do the napa like I am showing you right now. Just like I said, I like the flavor to be there already when I add this to my napa cabbage. Okay, now let's do a taste a test and see if I should add a more fish sauce or not. Perfect. Okay guys, and the spiciness is exactly what I wanted. So we're gonna leave this until our stuff is ready. We should have another 20 minutes or 15 minutes, I think, and we'll be done. Okay, I'll be right back. Just a quick note that if you have apple pear like this or any pear and you don't need them right away, you can peel it and remove the seed and then freeze it. It works really well. And that's exactly what I do, especially if I see them on sale because they freeze really well and it's also easier to grate them if they are frozen so that is another tidbit for you today especially if you're gonna do a lot of kimchi that is a good thing to remember so this is what it looks like after 20 minutes so let's see if it's ready so just going to the bottom you guys can see this part here so if you bend these and it cracks it's not yet ready so look at that it's not ready so you want it to be like this see this one here it's not cracking that means our kimchi is ready since this is a small batch looks like we just need 20 minutes see this one oh some parts is not yet ready <laughs> so we're gonna have to wait another five minutes just mix it so it kind of goes under the other pieces but i want to make sure the others are ready maybe it's just a mistake on that one over there Okay, let's go see this one here, my bend. Oh, looks like everything is ready except for a very few. In that case, we can just rinse these. So it's up to you if you wanna rinse it now or wait another 10 minutes uh, to be sure. But for me, this is what I wanted because I like, I like my kimchi 
crunchy. Okay, let's go see the others. Oh, not yet ready. Okay, so some is still cracked. So I'll give these uh, five more minutes just to be sure that others have gotten all the salt they needed. So we kind of cure it for five more minutes until everyone is ready. Okay, we'll be back after that. I end up giving it 10 more minutes, so 30 minutes is the total. So now let's go ahead and rinse these baby and mix everything. All right, now make sure you rinse it really good to remove the excess salt, just like these. Want to make sure everything is gone. And then we're going to go let it drain for a few minutes until there is no more excess water. And if you guys have those spinner, the salad spinner, then that will be a lot easier, but I don't have that. And so I gotta have to wait till this is completely dry or no more excess water at least. Just try your best not to have excess water, okay? Now that we basically have these drained, just put it back in a container so it's easier for you to mix the rest of the ingredients. Okay, just leave it here. There we go. And now, now that you have it there, just add like a one fourth of these so you can mix it really good. And then top the rest. So just mix it until everything is covered. So you want to make sure everything is covered. So since we're doing a small batch, this is a little bit harder than just putting it in a big leaf. So I think it's the reason why a lot of people likes it full leaf instead of cut like this. But I find it's easier. So when I am eating it, it's easier. I'm just biting from it. Okay, and it's also easy if you want to make kimchi pancake or stir fried pork with kimchi. There is a lot of recipe that we're going to go tackle on our next video using this kimchi base. Okay, now that we basically have it covered, see that? Now we're going to add the vegetables, the rest of our vegetable. Get inside, girlfriend. Okay, there we go. Add them. So like I said, you guys can make this more or less depends on your preference but for today since you guys are still learning how to make the kimchi and you don't know your preference yet just a follow what i have here and you'll be happy i hope let me know in the comments down below how's your turn out okay i would love to know okay now add another one fourth or half of the rest okay and now cover them just like these, cover real good. Okay, if you wanna make sure everything is covered, you can use your hand, use, uh, how do you call it, gloves, so it's easier for you because the pepper stays in the fingernail, especially if you have a nice fingernails. I don't. <laughs> so this is basically that. Look how pretty it is, you guys. Look at that, pretty good, huh? Okay. So you can make these like at night time and then the neck at, in the morning, you can put it in the container already. I usually leave it like this here because it's easier for me to mix before I put it in a bottle to completely ferment. Okay, and so there we go. Add the rest and just mix it. So if you guys are find this a little bit too spicy, then you can adjust with more of the Napa cabbage, okay? So just make sure you add, just do the same process as I did a while ago. Cut the Napa and there we go. I think I did not make the, seems like my Napa should be more than this. So I think eight will do better since we got more of the sauce. So you guys can see. Pretty colorful, right? So we're gonna leave these on this container covered up for two hours. And then we're gonna go put it on a container later, a glass container or kimchi container if you guys have one of those. 
And if you guys have those kimchi container, you can mix it directly on that and then just leave it there. And here, that's it. So later on, we'll put this on the container. See that? Very simple. Once you get the hang of making this, it's going to be super easy. Then just cover it. Wait a two hours and we'll come back when it's ready. We'll see you in a bit. It's been two hours, and so now my plan is to put these in uh, in my container. So I have this, this is a juicer container, but I like the idea that it is slender and big. So easier for me to keep on the fridge. So this is optional. I just like that it's easier for me to mix this completely again before I put it on the container. So it looks like these I can add more Napa cabbage just because my Napa is smaller than I thought but if you guys have a bigger Napa yours will be perfect for that amount that I have given in the description okay now let's just put it right here so if you guys don't want to wait up for two hours you can do this as soon as you mix these kimchi okay so this is optional, like I said, you can either wait for two hours or put it directly on this container. It's just easier for me to mix it again instead of mixing it again when it is inside the container. I just like it to be completely mixed. Again, preference, right? I think you can find your own rhythm once you keep doing it. But for me, this works the best. Okay, just keep putting it and then after when it is half, 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 we can push it down to remove the air. We don't want extra air, so the fermentation is a perfect, at least for me. Okay, just keep pushing, fill it up. This amount is perfect for this container. I think over time I have given a good eyeball for what is the best amount for my container so you can do the same again i only make it a small batch so you guys if you guys don't like it at least you don't feel like you wasted too much of your time and your money i hate doing that i have seen so many recipe online that i did not like and then i feel like i should have done a smaller version instead of following the whole recipe in that way, if I don't like it, I don't feel like there's a lot of money that I have wasted, especially nowadays. We don't want that, right? We try to save as much as we can. Okay, also, if you guys think it's too runny for you, you can add more Napa or some of radishes. That way, you get the most out of it but this is gonna be so yummy okay now just push it make sure all the air is out there we go the bottom is not completely pushed i usually put half and then push it just so there is no air whatsoever and remember not to fill it up all the way to the rim because it ferments so you don't want it to be all the way. So you can remove the excess water or whatever is left in it. Usually just wipe it down and then cover it. So this one, it comes with, because this is a canning glass, there is one that you can use to remove excess gas instead of opening it. You can also use it as a juicer. Get it from Amazon so there you go guys look how pretty it looks right you would think it's so hard to make but it is not a very simple if you guys follow the recipe you'll realize how easy it is and the more you do it the quicker it gets so now that you have put these in the bottle you can leave these in the counter for 24 hours or two days if you want it to be quick fermentation but if you don't want that and you want it to be crispy and still taste uh, fresh, you can put these already on the fridge. I usually do that because I like it very like crunchy, fresh kimchi. 
or I can leave it for 24 hours and then I get a good enough fermentation to help my belly. So that's that, those are like, you can change that based on your experience or your preference taste wise. Okay, with that as said, I hope you guys enjoy my video. And if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And I would love to hear how your kimchi turns out. I hope you have a wonderful one. I'll see you next time. Bye.